<laughs> uh, but okay, yeah, we're going right to town and city. No button check here. Just playing the playing the matchup that these two have played often, uh, early, often, and all the time, even. <laughs> yep, time and time again. So we're gonna see how it pans out this time. John already looking to get some things started at the ledge, forced into an awkward tech situation, but Jen not able to capitalize. Woo. Oh yeah, he looked for the down air there. That made sense because of how deep the edge guard, uh, the air dodge was. He wanted to catch the uh, catch the obvious uh, up beat needed coming out from John. But again, another air dodge, well deep and giving giving Jen a chance to throw out another down air. 0 for two thus far, but I'm willing to bet that uh, Jen will not be deterred because all you need is one of those to make a huge difference in the set. Yeah, that being said though, you know, John has been using the pretty good drift of Wii Fit a lot lately. We very often see him up be just a little bit around the ledge to discourage attacking just at it, but deep breathing back air, me taking Jen's first stock. John is running away, making space and stretching his legs. We are standing here. Okay. <laughs> the neutral. <laughs> you know, we are in a, we are in a neutral presence, but John had stage control, which is all the more impressive. Going to pepper away on the corner pressure thanks to a mixture of the platform layout and Jen's willingness to play it patient. He's not trying to rush in and start playing John's game and playing the the we fit Hollabaloo. Yeah. But it's it gets difficult because John can do that off, off of landing back airs or uh, many of these landing aerials going instantly into a crouch shuts down one of Palutena's best reversals. And that's it's tough to play around. It is. All right. I like the use of the explosive flame to try and discourage John from you know setting up his resources the way that he often does off stage. Yeah, it's the you have all of this offstage room, and you can turn that all space into invulnerability, but with the high percent, he doesn't have much of that invulnerability on ledge, picking a quick option that Jen was ready to scoop right up. Yeah, I think John was looking to try and catch Jen teleporting to the ledge with the up B, but unfortunately got a little bit too antsy coming off of the ledge after it didn't work, running himself right into the up tilt. But Jen has a bit of a mountain to climb as John is looking to close in on this second stock. Jen already at 137%. I love the drift back spacing with the neutral air, making sure that shield grab was absolutely not, on, not an option. Yeah, Jen's almost playing this uh, corner. Oh, wow. getting the volleyball up across the height of the stage. And a high percent like that is absolutely going to close out the stock. But Jen's just trying to find situations where he can be uh, fully in control. Even if John is on ledge, he's in control of all of that space thanks to Palutena's insane airspeed and the length of her hitboxes. Like on this ledge here, trying to first poke away with down tilt that time, but John gets an immediate reversal before getting grabbed. At these low percents, you can kind of find quick reversals like Ooh. that. That was so clean from Jen, able to go out there like he had been time and time again, force John into uh, trying to assume of what Jen was looking for. But the quick teleport into a down air, super nice. Oh, Ooh. hello. Oh, yeah, John had to end. use the up B right there. And we already saw it, you know, John trying to mix up his spacing to see if he can clip Jen with those hula hoops. But now John off stage again. Jen bring this pretty much to an even game. Yeah, uh, especially basically all it takes is one or two more back airs at this point. But using the full charge cancel in order to get right in with a grab. No deep breathing at the moment though. That's just a charge sun salutation in his pocket that you have to look out for. The downer gets parried into a down throw back air. 86% now looking for the second one in order to close out the stock. But deep breathing on deck. Missing the down smash, which leads to another back throw. Jen playing the corner, trying to throw out. Uh, uh, this time being actually very reserved with a couple of the aerials. You're expecting a back air, but he's looking for a jump. He's looking for an up air, but the reserved nature gets John back to center and gets John on a lead trap of his own. And another deep breathing. And now Jen is at Ooh. the corner, but fights his way out with the explosive flame. I love the use of that to cover that space. Jen a little bit more time and deep breathing is out again, but resetting the situation probably gonna set up another deep breathing yeah. Ooh, Catches the sock ball. Not gonna be taking it just yet, but an untackable Don't even need the sweet spot there 
Yeah, absolutely. Well played from both participants is John understanding his wind condition where it's like I can see that I need deep breathing here to make sure that my four throw kill throw is online. Get Jen rethinking about his recovery routes. And once they saw him going low, that means all you need is a long lasting aerial. At about the same time they disappear, you can hit it right where they get the uh, go to the ledge hang at a consistent timing every time. And we fit down air is just one of those moves that you wouldn't think it lasts as long as it does. Yeah, it's like but what, then it does. four frames at least? Yeah, I think it's like four or five frames. It's crazy. Yeah. <laughs> Ooh, okay, that time John clipping Jen with the, the hula hoops. Yeah, I see what you uh, mean there, where John will go the like the in and then out. Um, I, um, the only uh, similarity that comes to my head is uh, Piranha Plant, where Piranha Plants will like, weave Ooh, in yeah. and then drift back to ledge really quick. Just throw off timings, throw off angles, very little bit, because obviously against a character that plays a lot on the ledge, you're looking for the huge punish like a downer. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and Chen finding it. Yeah, yeah, it's a pretty good one. Pretty good. <laughs> That's pretty okay in my book. It doesn't have to last four frames, you know. No, you just need to time it right, and that's all it takes. As Jen is just looking to try and take take this game by the horns instead of letting John dictate the pace, go off with those down airs and uh, start pushing advantage a little bit more forward. If Numbers wants to hold away through a lot of these interactions, then hold there right where with him, or use an explosive flame as a surrogate for that very option. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I mean. I feel like that's really interesting because of the way that John has been playing. John, I feel like, has kind of forced the, or typically forces the pace of the game to slow down because of his very reactionary game plan. He's waiting for you to do things as you come in. Very true. 76 now, or 74, get those 2% yep. from the Sun Salutation. It can matter, <laughs> as we all have seen. We've all seen the numbers in G Clip. That's great. Yeah. <laughs> Still that explosive flame, Ooh. throwing out a second one, forcing the air dodge, but the, uh, the auto reticle just misses. But Jen has been reading these rolls like it's nobody's business. It'll just that, that position, roll distance, face backwards. You're threatening back air and grab at the same time as we see another grab come out from Jen. Getting the back throw, not able to take the stock quite yet, but I'm almost waiting. We're getting to the percents where a drop zone Nair is uh, on the table for a kill option, and that covers these low recoveries that John has been doing uh, very, very frequently. Yeah, I mean, especially even if John is able to grab ledge, he's not going to find many invincibility frames, but finding the invincible dash attack, Jen taking John's second stock. Such a good burst option, just able to. Oh, he missed the deep breathing. Gonna eat only 15, now 13% for it, but it just goes to show that Jen's game plan, even from the latter half of game one into this game two, is all about control. Stop letting John do what he wants, don't let him get away with it. An early lead helps with that, but more likely, um, more recently, it's just been the amount of presence that, John, uh, that Jen has had over a wide variety of positions. Yeah, really being able to threaten those spaces where John has typically in other matchups felt so so comfy. There we go. Finally seeing Ooh, the teleport good. cancels come out. John not really ready for it and has to work that much harder to get Jen's second stock while Jen keeps racking up the damage right now. And at 53% now, you're expecting John to try and force a scramble like that going off the empty hop into the forward tilt, but Jen's staying disciplined. Throwing out the salutation early though, catches the landing fair. Trying his best to anticipate some of these uh, teleport angles, but uh, Jen has just been very, very clever with going high, low, or going to ledge or not, like so. A very, very high teleport to ledge, and there's very little John can do about that since he can't even two frame a recovery, a teleport recovery from above ledge. Mm -hmm. All right, Jen looking to get a two frame of his own right there with the down tilt. Not quite finding it, but. All right, finding the Nair. John off stage now, and there we see again Jen just trying to threaten that zone where John has historically felt so comfortable. Not quite finding it there, but another roll read. Great match by John. Oh, but it was a setup just to play center, and that time going for the double jump up air. It's sometimes it's just the little things that you can change up uh, from an offensive or defensive standpoint. I mean, there's the consistency of 
gen standing at roll distance. But here, in a spot like this, uh, basically every single time, uh, Jen would go for a back air. As we're gonna, we're gonna reset this and let it fully play out. Uh, Jen would go for a back air in just about this situation. And every time they go deep like this, they'll go for like a double jump back air here. Just you're close to the ledge, you're close to the side of the blast, and you're trying to blow him up. But mixing up John, thinking that he's safe, and then hitting him with an up air, and sometimes those little changes are all you need in a matchup that can come, or in a matchup that is so familiar but of the Jen and John matchup, that little change ups like that can make a world of difference. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, just that little extra bit of verticality as well as just the long lasting nature of the hitbox getting Jen that last stock. And now we're seeing game three coming in at small battlefield. I like this pick from John. Not only are you removing the length of the stage and letting us, letting Jen abuse Palutena's speed less, but you're also in a way granting yourself the option of there will be more scrambles uh, the opportunity, rather. The opportunity to um, have more scrambles, more uh, hectic scenarios that'll net you opportunities to land deep breathing forward tilts or uh, some uh, some random hitbox that'll just be enough to change the direction of the game as we fit can put on so much damage very quickly. Yeah, but and it's still a biplat. Can you even, you know, you even pointed out at the end of game two, that's kind of how John was looking to close out stocks, was those sort of scramble situations, the sort of, you know, tomahawk empty movement into just some button, like a up tilt or a deep breathing F tilt. Right. But Jen was not quite biting. Ooh. And not biting almost got him his shield broken, which is a terrifying thought, especially at these high percents, because you are you're giving Wee Fit a chance to heal and a chance to blow Ooh. you up as that no deep breathing needed. That forward air is just going to destroy Jen's first stock with uh, a little bit of misty eye, but either way it was at high percents like that, you have to watch Ooh. out for Weefit's surprisingly strong options. That forward smash doing a huge chunk of damage. And now Jen finds himself behind the eight ball, which is the exact inverse. <laughs> like, it's the opposite of where you want to be, given how Jen has answered uh, John's uh, game plan. Yep, there we go, though. Finally getting the back air, getting John's first stock. John now playing at the ledge, trying to set up some resources of his own. I like the, you know, the fade back with the neutral air, not giving John the entrances with deep breathing that he so clearly wants right now. Trying his best to poke away at this lead is Jen, but John has just been finding those creative uses that I mentioned that one Jen game two, but it, uh, John kind of turning that on his head variety in his game plan and a mix-up of his offense and defensive habits turns a what should have been what could have been a spike for Jen into a spike for numbers yeah and I think Ooh. that is actually the first time we've seen uh -oh. John going for that particular header oh but unfortunately a missed angle from Jen is gonna be dead at 30 and you almost have to miss this angle you almost have to like try to get a unique spot because you get a header there John goes for the second one, hits it. Goes for the third one, would yeah. have hit. So you rely on your air drift and help. Just wasn't enough. <laughs> yeah, it, that's tough. Sort of a damned if you do, damned if you don't. For real. And mm -hmm. th those are uh, prominent in fighting games, but it's weird to be in that position overall in something like uh, something like Smash Ultimate where you're... Smash Ultimate is a game with some very, very uh, flexible recoveries, and they want the game wants you to be able to get back to ledge in, in order to play the game for longer. Yeah. But Weefit is one of those where she can just dominate that ledge space so weird in her own so well in her own awkward way that it's a checkmate even at thirty percent. 